Exactly when did the anime boom of the 90s begin, and from where did it begin? Well, the common consensus would tell you that it started in the later part of the decade with the likes of Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, and Sailor Moon. But what if I told you it began slightly earlier? Obviously, anime itself has been around a long time. The first majorly successful Western adaptations go all the way back to the 60s with shows like Speed Racer and Astro Boy. Then there's a bunch of cult favorites throughout the 70s and 80s, but it wasn't until the 90s that anime really became its own subculture. If you're like me and are a fellow Gen Wire born in the 80s or 90s, chances are you watched shows on Nick Jr. when you were little, and right now you're probably thinking to yourself, Nick Jr., what does that have to do with anime? Well, just hold on, I'm getting to that. We all remember shows like David the Gnome, Heathcliff, and Eureka's Castle, but what about those other more obscure shows that you swore were just fever dreams or some kind of Mandela effect? For example, does anybody remember that one show about the bees? Who's a friendly little bee? Playing all so happily. Buzzing here and buzzing there. Busy buzzing everywhere. Yeah, that's the one. Holy shit, it was real. Okay, but what about the one with the koala bears in it? No, I don't think that was it. The one I remember involved a girl and her grandmother flying through different places. That's the show! Wow. Good to know I'm not actually crazy and imagine this stuff. But seriously, what is it with Japan and fucking koala bears? Anyways, what about the one where each episode was a different fairy tale? Yep, that's it. I knew that one was real. But there's one show I don't remember too much about. All I know is that there was a giant flying squirrel that the other characters would ride on. Okay, so the squirrel wasn't actually giant, the other characters were just really tiny. Wow, talk about a trip down memory lane, huh? Well, it turns out all those shows were actually originally made from Japanese animation studios and adapted for Western audiences, therefore making them anime. It's kind of scary thinking that Japan was inoculating programs into the minds of young children in the West, only to prepare them for what was to come. From the DBZs to the Pokemons, then the Naruto's to the Bleaches, to the Attack on Titans and Sword Art Online's, all the way now to the My Hero Academias and Demon Slayers. Wanna know what else is crazy? All those Nick Jr. shows were produced by Haim Saban. Yeah, that's right, as in Saban Entertainment, the company that made the fucking Power Rangers, which is also an American adaptation of a Japanese show. I don't know, I just thought this was interesting to share. And, uh, sorry about the shitty lighting. 